Okay, uh, welcome to our second tutorial of the Q1 Hackathon. Excited to have David DeSanto uh, from the Secure and Defend team. Uh, why, I don't think we had a, a tutorial uh, in the past on, on the security arena at GitLab, so glad to have you here, David. I'll let you introduce yourself and I'll let, let you take it from here. Thanks, Ray. Uh, I'm excited to be here as well and excited to see what the community does with Secure and Defend. So as Ray mentioned, I'm David DeSanto, I'm Director of Product for Secure and Defend. Uh, Secure and Defend are our security focused stages, the DevOps lifecycle. And so there's a lot of really fun, exciting things going on with them. So I'll share my screen here so we can start talking about it. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about Secure and Defend, but we'll first talk about Secure. And when we think about secure, we look at that as the offensive security or, or proactive security component of the DevOps lifecycle. And so we're focused on identifying vulnerabilities and weaknesses so people can reduce their risk. And you can see in the diagram here, secure lives underneath the dev section of the DevOps lifecycle. Uh, over the next year or two, it'll begin to go into the ops side as well. Uh, but today we're primarily focused on bringing security as close to developer as possible. The secure team uh, includes myself, as well as four product managers, uh, and an ever-growing engineering org. Uh, includes multiple technical writers, dedicated UX. We can make sure uh, security is being done right within the product. Again, we have uh, multiple focuses, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, but again, the team is rather large. Um, if you're wanting to look at uh, ways to communicate with the team, uh, we do have a GitLab group that you can mention as well as uh, some tags focused on secure. And of course, we have a long playlist of videos and demos over the last several months of the group being together. Our uh, direction page is a really great place to look to kind of understand what is going on within secure. If I kind of scroll down a little bit, um, first we define our groups. And actually, let me refresh that, make sure we've got this copy, there we go. And so when looking at it, uh, we first have a stack analysis group. So that's focusing on testing the code uh, not running. So just scanning the repository for known issues within the code. We have a dynamic analysis group that actually focuses on the application as it runs. So we will use the GitLab review app. It comes online and then we scan that app just the way any other user would use it. And we have a comp anal composition analysis team. They're also focused on the components that go into the product. And so uh, if your application is using dependencies, open source licensing, uh, those can be checked to make sure they're free from vulnerabilities or they're a license that you want to use within your project. And then finally, uh, from the products that we have an attack surface team, they're focused on testing applications and services for uh, vulnerabilities or weaknesses in their configuration. And this is a brand new team. Uh, their first focus is on expired or weak SSL TLS settings. So if you think about, uh, traffic, you're watching this maybe on YouTube, you're communicating HTTPS that requires encryption. And this team's first charter is to make sure that like weak cipher suites, things that would be easily crackable or expired certificates are not being used. Uh, we have one non-product team, uh, vulnerability research team. They're focused on adding vulnerabilities into our database such that the four groups I just mentioned can leverage that as part of their testing. There's a lot more going on with it. I don't want to spend our entire time just looking at this. The next area just to highlight for you as you think about areas you want to contribute. Uh, we've defined multiple themes for secure. One is we want secure to be a team effort. So we want to include secure in the core level of the license or in the FOSS offering, depending on which one you're using. We want to continue to move security left. Uh, make sure we're getting those uh, data back to the developers in the, the view they're used to using. And the last one I would highlight for you uh, is bring your own tools. So being able to integrate in third-party products in such a way that they feel as if they're part of that DevOps lifecycle that uh, we at GitLab here offer. As you begin to think about areas you would want to potentially look at, uh, the best way to kind of look at what we have today is on the categories page in our handbook. And in here, we list out contact information. And so you can say like, hey, I, I'm thinking about doing something on the SaaS side or stack analysis side but I really wanna to talk to the product manager for that. You can go in and find the product manager and then be able to comment on an issue and interact with them. And you don't have to be a GitLab employee to add comments to issues that you see in our UI. You can uh, add comments, you can tag an entire team and you can see 
we have some tags for that as well. Or you can just at the product manager or one of the developers that you may want to interact with. And same thing, so if you go down, you can also see the individual categories. So let's say you want to look at what we plan on fuzzing. You can click on strategy, and it'll take you into what we're thinking is part of that. If you're wanting to then say not contribute something net new, but you want to dive in and see what you can contribute on the secure side outside of that, you can go into our issues and you can actually search. And here I filtered by accepting merge requests. So you can see things that are available for uh, improvements. In this case, I filtered on our stack analysis group and you can see the category SAS. And the last thing I added was a milestone of waiting further detail. So here you can see there's nine items that we're waiting more feedback on to prioritize and put into the backlog. So let's say you really care about React.js and security related React.js. React you can actually come in here and look at the SAS issue that's been filed, see what our thoughts are, and you can then immediately contribute a merge request uh, to this issue and then have it be reviewed by the team and, and get it integrated into the platform. That's a really high level of SAS and secure as a whole. Uh, next, I just want to kind of give you a, a rundown of what's in Defend. So when we talk about Defend, we're talking about the operational side. You can see that here on the uh, lifecycle. Um, so it's sitting underneath the ops side. And our goal is to protect native uh, cloud native application services and infrastructure. And today, uh, Defend's very new. So we only have one category that's available today. Uh, for use, and that's our WAF, and that is available in the core level of the licensing. But we have lots of really cool and exciting things to come up, including container native, or I'm sorry, uh, container network security, so providing firewalling and intrusion prevention at the container level. We're also looking at extending uh, usability and anomaly detection with our UEBA offering. And so there's a lot of stuff that's really cool coming up, and I'm actually really excited on the call. Uh, we have our director of engineering for Defend. Uh, Wayne, and we'll let uh, Wayne kind of make some suggestions here as to areas that he would love to see the community contribute. Yeah, thanks, David. So we are um, we are working on all the things David mentioned, and also vulnerability management, um, which is being able to manage the vulnerabilities, work them, mark them as open, closed, comment on on, on them, etc. So many of these things are still very new, um, and we've brainstormed on where we can um, where the community can really contribute. And right now it's more on feedback on the user interface designs and our plans. We've tried to take out some, some specific initiatives that the community could work on, but we feel it's a little bit premature um, at the current time, but we definitely, want folk, we definitely want feedback. We want ideas, file issues with ideas on how we can better um, you know, put in defend features. We'd love to see those things. We're not ready just yet for uh, contributing code, unless folks uh, find some great places to do it. But uh, currently, when we brainstorm with the team, we didn't. And again, as David mentioned, it's um, with Web App Firewall, which we've done via um, using um, mod security linked into NGNX. NGNX. We, with uh, Cilium integrated for doing network policies inside Kubernetes. Um, vulnerability management, which is inside the GitLab product itself, and um, other things coming as well. Thanks, Wayne. Um, as I mentioned, Defend's newer, and Wayne just touched on that as well. So the team is still growing, but you, here you can see uh, the people we have as part of the team. And to kind of show you uh, kind of what we're focused on, as Wayne mentioned, our direction page is a great place to do that. So if you hop down and look at the categories, you can see what Wayne was just mentioning. So WAF is the only thing currently released. It's minimal. We do have plans to add intrusion prevention, uh, as well as things like uh, RASP. Uh, but everything is still very new. Uh, Container Network Security will be shipping soon, uh, but we're very excited to be growing the defense side of our portfolio. Um, same thing if you wanted to search the backlog. I know Wayne just mentioned there's not a lot of areas yet that they think that can be contribution be done yet, but here I, what I did was I searched by, again, accepting uh, merge requests. I selected Container Network Security, and then the milestone I noticed that was heavily used for things that haven't been looked at was backlog. So that is my milestone. And one of the items I, I was looking at actually last night when thinking about areas that maybe the community could, uh, could contribute is the auto notify of on call personnel. This is the ability to monitor the logs and if the, an event occurs, be able to message it out. 
Um, again, you could always go in and just kind of review it um, and then begin to add in potential community contribution for notifications. Yeah, that, that would be a potential good one. Um, you know, it could be via um, notifying on call via Slack, via PagerDuty, or whatever other methods um, are deemed appropriate. So yeah, that, that one is um, that one's a potential good one. Uh, again, all the contact information is on that categories page. And you can see uh, the individual product managers. Uh, Wayne is here as well. Um, but I'll just use my profile as an example. So you're like, hey, David, great kickoff to the hackathon. I want to contribute to Secure and Defend. How do I get a uh, hold of you? You can actually just click on the names that you see and it takes you over to our team profile. And from there, you'll see all the contact information. Um, so we'll give it a second to load. I'm at a hotel this morning. If you can't tell by the background and my internet's super slow. Uh, but you can see a little bit about me. Uh, see Twitter. I'll tell you it's very boring. I almost never tweet, but it's there. Uh, and then, of course, you can look at my GitLab profile. And then from there, you can see um, my contact information. You can see a little bit about me. And you can see the things that I'm commenting on that are, are public. And uh, I will highlight that there I do say, I live with two dogs and, a, and my wife in Texas. And here's that dynamic duo that's mentioned in my profile. Um, so I'll tell you, they're very bad coders. I think it's because they don't have opposable thumbs. However, uh, I'm sure at some point they would love to be community contributors as well. Uh, the last thing I just wanted to highlight for you, I noticed that this was highlighting a couple other kickoff calls, but uh, if you wanted to say it's contribute- It's bad, David, that we're, we haven't written GitLab in uh, rough on Rails. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. Yeah. Uh, what you can do is just look at general issues that aren't assigned to a group. That means that no team has picked them up. And what I did here is I searched again inside the GitLab org group for accepting merge requests and not, uh, or group not owned. And then in here, you can see that there are other areas that may be of interest to you that you would want to, to work on as well. And as Wayne said, uh, and I'll speak on behalf of Todd, who's the Director of Engineering for Secure, you know, we're very open to you making suggestions, as Wayne said, and filing issues and tagging us so we can review it. Um, it could become a priority and we could get it in. Uh, also, you could file it and we'll say that's a great idea as well. We would love that to be a community contribution and then we could work with you as part of that as well. Um, to kind of wrap things up here, I just wanted to thank everybody for taking the time to watch the video. I see a couple of people have joined since the uh, recording started, um, but at this point I'd love to open it up for any questions that there might be. Well, thanks, David and Wayne. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I definitely see like now three community members that are that are online. I mean, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, verbalize them, or if you want to type it in the chat window, if that's your preference, that's completely acceptable. Yeah, and I also want to reiterate, like David it just said, I mean, this is something that I repeat. Uh, I, I mean, I, I never get tired of repeating this. Like if you need to ping somebody at GitLab, it's a completely fair game. Like you don't have to be an employee to be able to ping anybody at GitLab. If you have any questions uh, to Wayne or others on the engineering side about what about this feature on, on Defend? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it, we, we love having interactions with community members to gain your insight. So feel free to like reach out to us anytime. Yeah, it's a, it's a very good point. Uh, you can actually see community contributions uh, on the maturity pages of the stages. And in the case of Secure, we've had several good community contributions to approve upon it. Um, the other thing I, I did want to highlight too, I just realized I forgot to do, is that we're also focusing on contributing to the community. So it's not just the work that we're doing uh, and making a community edition or FOSS version of the product, but we're also now contributing back upstream to the open source uh, projects that we are using to extend what we're doing with our, our solutions. And Wayne, since you're on the call, I don't know if there's anything you wanna highlight about uh, what you did with Cilium, but I think it was very exciting that we began to help out the, the broader community, not just the GitLab community. Yeah, so we were, um, you know, we, we use Cilium for, the, for implementing network policies inside of uh, Kubernetes when we use Auto DevOps to, to push that for our customers. And uh, Cilium has, has a lot of great features. We looked at a lot of different uh, open source projects and settled on Cilium, but not everything. So we've been able to uh, uh, make changes to the Cilium open source project, which um, I think all but one have been accepted already, or actually all have been accepted, one hasn't been um, 
released just yet. And um, for example, Cilium uh, allowed blocking and logging of traffic, but didn't allow logging only. And that's something that we feel is important. So we added that to the Cilium open source project so it can do that. We made some other changes as well, but that's been a great experience working uh, with that open source project. Thank you, Wayne. That's great. Um, so uh, yeah, so we're open to any questions you may have. If you don't, uh, I'll just take that as Wayne and I did a, such a phenomenal job on this that you have zero questions, and we'll just we'll pat ourselves on the back. Right. Yeah. I mean, one one more uh, call for questions, and I mean, quick request to you, David, if you don't mind sending me the link to the presentation, I'll post it along with the recording on the hackathon page after we're done here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cool. The same sort of contact information is in there for Defend. I realize we didn't really talk about that, um, but yeah, same thing. You can mention the the Defend team, and I'll get to the entire stage. Right. Um, but I will yeah. provide, I'll provide you the deck, and I'll make it uh, accessible by everybody in the world, so that way anybody as part of the hackathon can view it. Right. Yeah, and just one other caveat, I guess. The Slack is, uh, I mean, not available to the uh, wider community. Is that correct? That's GitLab only. That, that's correct. I, I yeah. left it in there because it's in all of our uh, yeah. public live streams yeah. with the group conversation. Right. But yeah, I, I mean, as usual, people can ping me on Gitter. And then if I need to forward the question over to one of these Slack channels, I'll be more than happy to do them. Do it. So. Cool. Uh, I guess there are no uh, questions from the participants. So we'll just wrap it up. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ping me on, on Gitter and then uh, well, uh, thank you, Wayne and and David for the for the for the session. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Good luck with the uh, hackathon, and let Thanks. us know how we can help. All right. Cheers. Have a good one. Bye. 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 See you.